What's up? I'm Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video in this quick guide. I'll be taking you through setting up and getting your own Sons of the Forest server completely for free. You'll be running your dedicated server on your own hardware so you don't need the game open for you and your friends to play. You can leave the server running 24 7 and it's of course completely free assuming you leave your computer on. So how exactly do we set up a Sons of the Forest dedicated server? Well first of all we need to download it. For this you can download it through Steam. Simply by searching for Sons of you should find the actual game itself as well as the dedicated server. While you can download it using this method and it may be easier at first glance, it's actually much, much better to use a command line version of Steam officially released by Valve in order to download and keep the server up to date. So we'll minimize Steam here and we'll make a new folder on our desktop called maybe SOTF Sons of the Forest. In the description down below you'll find my guide that I'm following along with as well as command reference that we'll be getting to later such as this update a bat file and these firewall rules here. Anyways, starting from the very top inside of this folder here, we'll open it up and there'll be nothing in it. Let's go ahead and down the command line version of Steam known as Steam CMD. In the description down below you'll find a link to the Valve valvesoftware.com website. This is the official Valve Steam CMD page. We'll simply click Windows here. Then we'll click this little one next to download the Steam CMD for Windows right here. That'll then download a zip file. All we need to do is open this up and inside of our folder we'll make a new folder called Steam CMD. Then we'll extract the contents of the zip, which is just one exe file, into here. We can close and delete the zip, and now we should be set up. Going back a folder to here, on the previously mentioned article page here, you'll find this update a bat section. This will go ahead and start up Steam CMD, log in, and start downloading Sons of the Forest dedicated server to a folder called server, and then finish. We'll copy this here, right click in our SOTF folder, new, followed by text document, and we'll call it updater.bat. Just make sure you replace .txt with .bat and confirm the change, otherwise this file won't be runnable. If you don't see .txt at the very end to rename it, on Windows 11 click view followed by show and make sure both file name extensions and hidden items are ticked. On Windows 10 and previous versions of 11, you'll need to go to the view tab at the very top in the ribbon and you should see a tick box somewhere on the right. Anyways, when we get here, simply right click updated.bat and click edit. Then inside of notepad, we'll copy the command in using this copy button here and paste it. Control S to save and we can close the updater bat file. Then we'll double click in it to open it up. This window will then appear and it'll download the Steam CMD client. You'll see it extract in Steam CMD. Then heading back a folder and looking at the window here, you should see it log in and start downloading the Sons of the Forest dedicated server. In order to update our server in the future, just simply double click this bat file and it'll update just like that. So there the download begins and shortly after it should complete depending on the speed of your line. Sweet. It'll then verify and extract and then close immediately after. Now we have a new server folder here. Opening it up, you'll find all of the files for the Sons of the Forest dedicated server here, including start SOTF dedicated dot bat. All we need to do is run this file once. In order to generate files, you should see something along the lines of self tests. Please restart the server. All we need to do here is close this file, then hold start and press R on your keyboard to bring up this run dialog here. And inside of it, we'll type in percentage local app data percentage low and hit enter. Now we'll be inside of C users your username app data local low. Then we'll head into end night followed by sons of the forest DS and inside of here we'll have our options for our dedicated server. In the owners whitelist file here you can simply add new lines at the very end and add your steam ID here in order to give yourself admin. So for example 7656 etc etc. We'll then save it and close this file. In order to add multiple admins, just make a new line and type in their Steam ID here. I'll replace this with my actual Steam ID, save and close. Then dedicated server.cfg. This file here contains all of the options for our dedicated server and I'd recommend you customize these. Probably first will be the name here, for example, trouble 
shoot, but you can call us whatever you want, change the max number of players, set a password should you like, and most importantly, LAN only. This is a very important option. If you're only planning on running this locally and not having your friends over the internet connect, set this to true, otherwise your server won't start up. In order to get your friends to join, you need to port forward, but we'll get them later on. For now, just remember the ports 8766, 27016, and 9700. If you choose to change these, make sure you update the commands that will be running just now. At this point, you can save and close this file with your new server name, password, and other options set here. And of course, land only true or false, depending on how you want this to run. After closing this file, there's a few things left to do. If you were to run the server, only you would be able to connect on your own PC and only assuming you set that LAN only option to true. If you'd like anyone else to join your server on a different computer, you'll need to allow the dedicated server through your Windows firewall or antivirus firewall, etc. The simplest way is using the Windows firewall, but just keep in mind some antiviruses and other software do take this control away from Windows. I've made this super simple. In the article linked down below, you'll find this section here. These two PowerShell commands allow ports 8766, 27016, and 9700 through the Windows firewall, and it sets up everything for us. So we'll copy this, then we'll hit start, type in PowerShell, and run PowerShell as administrator. Simply paste in those commands and hit enter a few times to make sure they all ran, and there we go, they should now be added to our firewall. At this point, if you were to run the server with LAN only set to true, both you on your own PC and people connected to your network can join your server. I'll give you an example of that. I'll double click the server file with LAN only set to true so it'll actually start up and it'll eventually start up. It'll take a little while to begin and of course you'll see a bunch of warnings etc but this is just how the game is currently set up. Obviously this may look different for you in the future. It's busy generating the world. The first startup will usually be the longest but eventually you'll get to a point where it's done starting up and we're able to join it. At about this point here we should be able to join our server. So I'll fire up the game through Steam and it may say it's already running so you'll probably want to start the game itself before your server otherwise Steam will get confused and close the server when you click stop so I'll start the game first then when it's actually running I'll start the dedicated server in the background just little quirks of playing on the same computer you're hosting it on so I'll fire up my game here then I'll open up my server and there we go, I think we're running both of these. So in Sons of the Forest, I'll head to Multiplayer, followed by Join. And because we're connecting to our own computer, we'll change to LAN here. And just like that, you see Troubleshoot. We can go ahead and join this here. The intro scene plays. And there we go, our server is now running happily with us on it. If we open up the dedicated server here, you'll find some information about what exactly is going on as things happen, players joining, leaving, etc. At this point, it's just you and people on your local network connecting and playing, but how do we get more than just you and people sitting directly next to you to play on your server? Well, that's where things get a little bit tricky, but ultimately it's not too difficult. What you need to do is port form. Forward. Essentially, you're telling your router to take any traffic that reaches those ports and send them directly to your computer. If you have multiple routers in a chain between your computer and the internet, you'll need to point the furthermost one to the next one along the line, eventually forwarding all the way to your computer where the server is being hosted. That way, when people reach your external IP, as in your internet connection, it'll be sent directly to your computer hosting the server and people can join you. If this sounds really confusing, don't worry, I've got guides linked down in the description below about port forwarding that should really make things super simple even with multi-router setups. Essentially, you'll be hitting start and R, running CMD, and inside of here, typing in IP config, then hitting enter and finding the way that you're connected to the internet. In my case, it's Ethernet up here. We're looking for IPv4 address, and you can see mine is 192.168.150. All we need to do is open our router's admin page, which you can usually get to by heading to the default gateway here. In my case, 192.168.11, heading to the port forwarding section, and you should see something that looks similar to this. Just note this is a super simple example and hunting for this troubleshoot basic router won't actually do anything. You need to log into your local router 
and set up port forwarding through there. As there's thousands of router models, I'm not able to cover every one of them, so I've made a super simple example. All you'll do is select UDP and it'll be port forwarding 8766, 27016 and 9700 to our computer. In my case, I'll need to enter them manually. 8766, and if you see two spots for a range, you'll usually need to enter the same number in both, forwarding to 192.168.1.50, which is my computer's local IP address. We'll add this, followed by the rest of the ports here, 27016 UDP, and finally 9700. As such, just like that, we should now have port forwarded these ports to our computer. So when you disable the LAN only option, setting it back to false and restart your server, your server should then show up on the public listing available for your friends to come and play with you. As long as the dedicated server is running on your computer, your friends should be able to join you without issue, assuming port forwarding went well. Anyways, that's really about it for the super quick guide. So hopefully you found it useful. Thank you for watching. Might as well troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.